Well, it's great to be with you today. It's great to be with those of you who are here in the building and those of you who are at home worshiping with us. Uh, we want to once again do what has become our tradition here. I guess it's our COVID tradition. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody that is worshiping with us out there knows that those of us here are aware of their presence and are very much uh, aligned with them as we worship God this morning. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through the building. We're going to ask people to turn and wave, hold up their signs, their fat heads, whatever they have, and let the people know at home how much we love them and how much we look forward to the day we'll be together. So we're going to start as we usually do here on the south side, south side congregation, turn, wave, say hello, raise up your signs. All right. I've been given some flack about calling the middle group the undecided group, but I don't really care. The undecided group, turn and wave and say hello to the people who are at home. Let them know how much you love them. All right. Good job. And finally, my home congregation, the Northside Church of Christ of Albuquerque, New Mexico, turn and wave and say hello to the folks at home. All right, good job. Well, believe it or not, this is the last Sunday of September. And what a strange year it has been. In a year where it has been such a struggle to keep some sense of normalcy in the way that we do church, I want to make sure that we don't miss out on what has become a year-end tradition, a year-end tradition that has been a tremendous blessing to this congregation and to the members of this congregation. For the last several years, we have ended the year by sprinting to the finish. We have challenged each other to read through the entire New Testament over the last three months of the year. And if there was ever a year where we need to be filling our hearts and our minds and our thoughts with God's word, this has to be that year. So I want to encourage everybody, everybody who's here and everybody who's out there, I want to encourage everybody to join us this year in reading through the New Testament. This is something we want to do together. We want to do it together over the next three months. Let's do this together. So for those of you here who are here at the building, you should have received a Sprint to the Finish Bible reading plan as you came in. If you didn't, you can find copies back on one of the tables at the very back. I encourage you to take these home with you and not just take it home with you, but then also use it to guide your reading over the next three months. For those of you who are at home, you can find the same schedule on our website at netherwoodpark.com. We'll also be sending out in fact, it may have already gone out a news and, note, news and notes email uh, through Netherwood News and Notes that gives a link to that same reading plan. So there's multiple ways for you to get that. But I want you to know that we really encourage, we challenge you to read through the New Testament over the next 90 days. We can do this. You can do this. So let's read through the New Testament together. I also want to give a quick shout out to Chase for doing such a good job in my absence last week. You know, it's really reassuring to know that we have people like Chase and Addison and Craig and others among us who are more than able and more than willing to stand up and preach God's word so effectively. So thank you. Thank you all who have done that. Well, today I'll be continuing with our Heaven on Earth sermon series. And our focus today is going to be on obedience. Obedience. So how, how obedient are you? Be honest with yourself. How obedient are you? See, I think I'm a fairly obedient person. I generally abide by the laws. I usually follow instructions. I normally do what people who are in positions of authority tell me to do. But I also have to be honest and admit to you that I really don't like being told what to do. Okay, that's not completely accurate. I really, 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 really don't like being told what to do. In fact, my natural inclination when told what to do is to rebel. You tell me to go left, I want to go right. Tell me to do something on Thursday, then I want to do it on Friday. 
But even though that's my natural inclination, usually I don't rebel. Usually I do what I'm told. I usually go left and I do it on Thursday. Even though my natural response is to rebel, I normally obey. So why is that? Why do most of us do what we're told? Why do most of us obey even when our natural urge is to rebel? I think there are three primary reasons why rebels at heart like me still choose to abide by the laws and follow the instructions and do what people in positions of authority tell us to do. Number one, we choose to obey because of our fear of negative consequences if we do rebel, right? If I don't do what the boss says, then I may lose my job. If I don't do what my mom says, I may end up in time out. If I don't do what the coach says, I may end up sitting on the bench. And if I choose to drive 95 miles an hour on my way to Santa Fe, I may end up with a ticket and a large fine. So sometimes we don't rebel because we're afraid of the consequences. We're, we have fear of being punished. Well, a second reason why we often choose to obey is the expectation of positive consequences. The expectation of rewards if we are obedient. If I do what the boss says, maybe they'll give me a raise. If I do what my mom says, maybe she'll give me a cookie. You hear that, mom? If I do what the coach says, then maybe I'll get to play more. If I drive the speed limit, maybe I'll have a clean driving record and my insurance rates will go down. So we often obey because we expect a reward. And then the third and final reason why we often obey when we're tempted to rebel is because we simply conform to the behavior of the people who are around us. So there's a reason why you usually don't hear people cursing at church, right? And why people don't get drunk at potlucks and why people don't have loud phone conversations in the middle of a funeral service. We tend to conform to the expected norms and to the behavior of those who are around us. So we abide by the laws, we follow the instructions, and we do what people in positions of authority tell us to do out of some combination of fear of punishment, of hope for reward, or because we're conforming to the behavior of the people who are around us. And those are all good reasons. None of those reasons, fear and hope and conformity, none of those reasons are bad reasons for being obedient to the laws and to the leaders of the land. And they're also not bad reasons for being obedient to God. In fact, over the centuries, God has repeatedly pointed to those very reasons for why his people should remain obedient to him. So let me just give you one example of many examples out of the book of Deuteronomy. So this is when Israel is about to finally enter the land that God has promised them. And Moses speaks to them and he lays out the realities of obedience to God. I'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'll start in verse 13. Moses says, if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all of your heart and all of your soul. Then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle and you will eat and be satisfied. But be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain on the ground and the ground will yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. And in verse 26, he goes on and says, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and the curse, if you disobey 
the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. So Moses lays it out for them, doesn't he? Why should you be obedient, Israel? Well, because if you are obedient to your God, you will be blessed, you will be rewarded, you will prosper. Why should you be obedient, Israel? Well, because if you aren't obedient to your God, you will be cursed, you'll be punished, you will perish. And how can you stay obedient, Israel? Well, by staying true to your God, by staying true to your community, by surrounding yourself with other God followers instead of idol followers. So Israel had its reasons. Israel had its reasons to be obedient to their God. God, the promise keeper, promised to bless them for their obedience. God, the promise keeper, promised to curse them for their disobedience. And the promise keeper gave them a holy community to lead them into obedience. Israel had its reasons, but it turns out none of those reasons were enough. Fear of punishment, hope for a reward, a holy community wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for God's nation. It wasn't enough for Israel to remain obedient to their God. And we're no different, are we? Here's the deal. I want you to know the preacher can't preach enough hellfire and brimstone sermons about the coming judgment and the coming punishment for the disobedient. He can't preach enough of those kind of sermons to scare us into obedience. It just doesn't work. And we can't sing enough songs that remind us about how beautiful heaven's going to be. We can't sing enough songs about our yearning for that coming and yet distant reward. That isn't enough to spur us to obedience. It just doesn't work. And we can't build a big enough and a strong enough community of faith and of believers to keep us conformed to obedience. All those things help, but they're not enough. None of those things are enough to make us and to keep us obedient. And it's not because judgment isn't real. It's not because judgment isn't coming for the disobedient. It is. And it's not because heaven isn't going to be wonderful and beautiful. It is. And it's not because a strong and holy community of faith isn't important to us and our walk in obedience. It most certainly is important. But those things aren't enough. They weren't enough for Israel to remain obedient, and they aren't enough for us to do so either. See, here's the problem with those things. People who obey only out of fear of punishment, they are joyless people. They're judgmental people. They're bitter people. And they don't look anything like Jesus, and they don't bring heaven down to earth. And how about people who obey only out of hope for a reward to come in the next life? Well, those people are easily derailed from their walk in obedience by any hardship that comes to them, by any struggles that are put in their way, anything that can derail them in this life. And how about when our, dependent, when our obedience is dependent on the obedience of the people who are around us? Well, that doesn't work either because we're not always around people who are obedient. And because of that, we're not able to take the gospel out to the disobedient. We can't take the gospel to the disobedient because we're conformers and we'll conform to their disobedience. Instead of bringing God's light, the light that attracts them to God. So fear of punishment, 
and hope for a reward and a community of faith are all important and they're all good, but they're not enough. So what's missing? What's the missing ingredient for true obedience? What was it that Israel didn't have? What is it that we must have in order to be truly obedient to God? Well, it turns out that the same thing Israel was missing is the same thing that we often don't have. Or maybe I should say it this way. The same thing that Israel didn't give their God is the same thing that we often withhold from our God. The same thing that Israel didn't give to their God is the same thing we often withhold from our God. I want you to listen again to what Moses said to Israel. He said, if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. There's the missing ingredient. It's what Israel didn't give, and it's what we too often withhold. They didn't give God their whole hearts. And if we withhold our whole hearts from God, then we're going to continue to struggle with disobedience. It turns out that true obedience is a matter of the heart. You see, God's desire isn't that you obey him just because you're afraid. And God's desire isn't that you obey him just because you're hoping for a reward. And God's desire isn't that you're obedient just because those around you are obedient. No, God's desire is that you are wholeheartedly obedient. Wholeheartedly obedient. God's desire is that you are obedient because you are loved wholeheartedly and because you love wholeheartedly. God's desire is that you are wholeheartedly obedient to him because you are priceless in his eyes. God's desire is that you are wholeheartedly obedient to him because he has offered rebels like you and rebels like me a full pardon. And God's desire is that you are wholeheartedly obedient to him because he has given you his spirit, his spirit living inside you, transforming you from who you were into the image of his son. See, that's the message that Jesus brought down from heaven to earth. He didn't bring a message of fear. He didn't bring just a message of distant hope. No, he brought down a message of wholehearted love and wholehearted obedience right now. And that's heaven on earth. I want you to listen to Jesus's voice from John chapter 14. I'll start reading in verse 21. Jesus said, whoever has my commands and keeps them, that's the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. In verse 23, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. and My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. And anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. And that's the message from heaven I want you to hear today. Brothers and sisters, I want you to look and see the cross in front of you and know that you are loved and that you are priceless. And brothers and sisters, I want you to look behind you and see that you have left the past behind you and know and know that you are pardoned. And brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you have the spirit within you and right now you are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. 
And brothers and sisters, I want you to realize that God has held nothing back from you. And because God has held nothing back from you, I want you to hold nothing back from him. Let's give God our whole hearts. And let's give him our wholehearted obedience. So obviously I don't know your heart, but you know your heart. And if your heart doesn't belong to God, and if you are ready to give your heart to God, and if you're ready to stop withholding what God desires from you, your whole heart, I want you to know that this church wants to help you take your next step toward wholehearted love and wholehearted obedience. So we just ask you to do this one thing, wherever you are right now, whether you're in the building or whether you're worshiping at home, we ask you to do this one thing. Just reach out to us so we can reach back to you. So you can do that after services. Personally, you can talk to me or you can talk to one of the elders. We can help you take that step. And if you're at home, we just ask you to send us a message. You can contact the elders via email by just sending a message to elders at netherwoodpark.com. Or you can contact me directly by sending me a message at walter at netherwoodpark.com. Just contact us. And if you contact us, you can know that we will walk beside you and we will walk beside you wholeheartedly. Let me end by saying this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and give you his peace as you give him your whole heart. Amen.